Welcome back to Cards and Comics. Today I'm very excited to bring you my top 10 sales on eBay of 1990s football card inserts and parallels. Again, this is for January 2023. So we'll get right into it. So the reason I started doing this is because really I love the 90s cards. And I started collecting Barry Sanders. And I've kind of started collecting a little bit of Peyton Manning. Now I've had cards like this my whole life. In fact, I had a box of cards, I still do, of 90s cards of, you know, not just Barry Sanders, but other players, Brett Favre, Dan Marino. And when I see them, I pick them up. But I really wanted to see what the high end or the, the you know, the most popular cards are bringing because there is some interesting dynamics here between what baseball cards bring, which I'm very familiar with, and then the football inserts from the same era because... I'm very in tune with the Ken Griffey Jr. and the Frank Thomases of the world, which are pretty high end on the 90s you know, baseball card side. And I'm starting to familiarize myself with Barry Sanders, but it was fun to go through and see what some of these football cards are bringing from the 90s uh, on eBay. Now, again, this is only eBay sales that are either auctions or buy now. So that's just how I'm going to do this because I feel like those are, I can at least see if they're realistic or real sales. And just do my best judgment and I'll go from there. So the first one here, number 10, this is the 98 Donner Sleep Passing the Torch autograph with Peyton Manning and Johnny Unitas. Now this is a cool card because it's Peyton Manning's rookie year and it's got two legends, um, you know, um, Johnny Unitas and Peyton Manning on one card. Now it's over $2,905. This is really interesting to me because this would be like a King Griffey Jr. or Willie Mays dual auto, let's say back in the day. Um, and I think we know how much the mantle uh, Griffey is worth. You know, that car can bring over $10,000, right? Uh, because of, you know, mantle is such a big, big player. In football, um, I guess Jim Brown would have been that guy. Uh, or, you know, I guess I'm trying to think of another player who might. Um, anchor the card with Peyton Manning to bring that much money. However, um, it's just not, the markets aren't just the same. And so this card is worth quite a bit lower than that uh, Griffey Mantle, but it's still a very cool card. It's numbered at 1500. It's sold on January 29th. And again, it's numbered. And the same card sold for $3,684 in November. And I think what happened here is the card sold in November. In fact, you can see the January sale. It still has the eBay, you know, um, authentication sticker on the back when they got it in, in November. And I think they resold it because honestly, two things happened. One is the card looks like it has some damage on that top um, edge. Um, it looks like it's got some dings on the top and it's hard to see in the way I've cropped the photo, but in the, in the original, uh, scan, you can see maybe that card has got a little bit of a damage on it Two, with eBay's authentication and the program, the way it works is basically, it's very difficult to return an item, uh, like it used to be. Um, even if it's a little bit damaged, I think this may have fallen to that scenario where maybe the, the buyer had run out of time to do a return and therefore um, they couldn't return the item. So they just resold it because maybe it didn't, it wasn't going to grade what they would expect it to. So they just went ahead and, and resold it pretty quickly within a month you know, or between uh, November uh, 30th and January 29th. So two months later, it was up for sale again. Um, but it's a very cool card. It's definitely a card that, you know, I, I mentioned I was going to collect Peyton Manning to some, some extent. And this would be one of the cards to target. It, it'd be a very, very nice card to target as far as a meaning collection go. And this card has a very nice autograph. I mentioned in the in the mantle uh, and Griffey, you know, um, card video on on the baseball side. The auto to me is worth more than the card in terms of condition. I'd rather have a perfect ten auto and a PSA six or seven card. Because the auto is what is I'm buying. I'm not really paying as much for the card. I really want the autos to be nice. Uh, so moving on to number nine. So this is where four cards kind of all fell in the same price point, $2,999. And they're all four very cool and unique cards. I thought I'd just talk about each one of them 
for a second here um, because they're all very different. Uh, the first card is the 1999, uh, sorry, sorry, 1998 Bowman's Best Fusion Mirror Image um, Refractor card. It's numbered out of 99, so sorry, numbered out of 100. This is 91 out of 100, and it's Jerry Rice and Randy Moss. So again, this is Randy Moss's rookie card. So, and with probably the other best receiver of all time. So this is a really cool dual card. So you got Moss on one side, Jerry Rice on the other. Now the insert set, you know, there's this inserts and in other products like uh, hockey and uh, basketball. And those cards are gaining in popularity. You're seeing those sales jumping up higher and higher for like Wayne Gretzky or, you know, I think Kobe Bryant and, and Jordan have cards like this. So, um, they're numbered low, one out of a hundred, and in other sports, they're starting to jump up in popularity and sales, and this card definitely followed that line. And so it's a pretty big sale. It's a mint nine PSA, so nice condition. This card can be very condition sensitive. <laughs> Next up is the um, Champ Bealy 1999 uh, PMG, uh, number 29 out of 50, and this is Champ Bailey's rookie card. So, you know, to me, that makes it worth um, a little bit more and it's kind of fun to see a rookie card um, PMG uh, of a player who's a Hall of Fame player um, what you know bringing over three thousand you know three thousand dollars it's 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 to me that seems kind of legit that the card like this would bring that much um, again the seller who had this and some other cards on this list um, definitely has had a lot of his buy it now is hit because of the I mentioned in the baseball video there's player collectors and set collectors just gobbling these cards up because they don't think they're going to be around there's just no availability of the card so you got to kind of get them while they're available because you might not see them again for a long time uh, next up selling on January 1st is the 1999 Skybox Premium Blue Rubies so a Ruby's Blue, I don't know how you want to really talk about it, but it's the Blue Parallel from 1999 Skybox Premium. This is Ricky Williams. This is his rookie card. So the way it worked um, in 99 was the base or the veteran cards were numbered out of 30 and they were red, while the blue cards were the rookies and numbered out of 15. So it's the only year they really did it like this, where you've got the blue being rookies and numbered half as to what the veterans were were numbered, so this is a very odd year, in my opinion, for how they did the set. It just makes this card really rare. And I can see why, you know, it's a rookie card, and if somebody was wanting to put the set together, there's only 15 of each rookie, so you better get them while they're available. And somebody did hit the buy it now on this one. And again, these are all buy it now, so these are people out there really shopping for these really rare cards. Now, the next one is the 1998 Top Stars Walter Payton um, Hall of Fame Autograph Rookie Reprint. And so this is a really cool, and I actually had this card for a long time. I had it in a Tops, uh, sorry, in a uh, PSA holder. I think it was a PSA 8 or PSA 9. It had a very nice auto like this card does. Um, and I ended up, I think, trading it or selling it uh, to buy um, you know, something probably for my PC collection, either Griffey or maybe a Mantle or Maze uh, card back in... 2020 time period. So this is a card that I really liked. I, I love all Walter Payton autos because um, A, that he has a great signature and two, um, a lot of times his signature gets um, smudgy or it just bubbles. And so this has a 10 auto and it looks very nice. And so that 10 auto really carries a lot of weight on this card. The fact that it's a 9510 makes this card really, really special. Again, these autos were inserted one in 153 packs. I opened a box of 98 stars, uh, top stars on my channel uh, last year, and I got skunked. I didn't get hardly anything in that box. So um, there are tough boxes to open. So you have to open up quite a few boxes to even get close to a card like this. Um, and then there's a bunch of autos in the set, so you may not get the Walter Payton. I don't think the Payton's actually short printed. So you have just as big, good a mod of getting the Walter Payton as you do other insert, uh, autos in the set, but there's a lot of autos in the set. So again, it's a very much of a dilution factor going on there. So 
And again, most of these autos that you see of this card are damaged. So getting a perfect 10 was why this card probably got the bite now hit. Moving on to number eight. And so this is two sales I've combined into one because it's the same card. But it does show the, the interesting fact of um, the auto itself uh, affecting the value. And so this is the 98 Stadium Club co-signers Peyton Manning and Dan Marino autograph. So again, this is the second dual auto autograph card of Peyton Manning that's appeared on the list. So um, this was one in 235 packs. And one is a BGS 9 with a 10 auto. And the other one is just a PSA Gem Mint 10 with no auto grade. And it's clearly visible that the BGS card had a better autograph. And so normally a PSA 10 outsells a BGS 9 by miles and miles and miles. We saw that in the BGS and a PSA Derek Jeter's Essential Credentials card, which had a $5,000 difference between the BGS and the PSA card. Here, you saw a $50 difference and it's really due to the fact that the auto, uh, auto grade really affected the BGS value to where it sold for almost as much as the PSA 10, uh, one grade below. But it's really the auto that people really wanted to buy on this card. And you can see the Marino auto is faded and a little bubbly on that um, the PSA card where you got a very strong Marino autograph on the BGS card. Um, now, Peyton has three cards in the set, in the co-signer set. So he has this one with Marino. He also has one with Cordell Stewart and one with Ryan Leaf. So you can have three different um, autograph cards from the set with Peyton Manning as a rookie with three players. Now, obviously, the Marino is by far the best um, co-signer with this card. So uh, this is the Alpha and Omega if you want this card. It's a very cool card. All right, moving on to number seven. This is an interesting one. This, this is a lot of two cards. Now this is the 1998 Skybox EX2001 Essential Credentials Now. So I gotta start really being brushing up on my um, vernacular here. Sometimes I just say Essential Credentials, but there is now and future. So you have to be very careful because those two sets are very different in terms of the numbering. So this was two cards, uh, sold for $3,050. And the cards are numbered out of uh, 5 out of 16 and 15 out of 16. Now, the way these sets worked, and I did some digging, I finally figured it out, that they basically take on the now card, so the essential credentials now, is numbered to the card number in the set. So Terry Glenn is card number 16 in the set, so it's numbered out of 16. Now, there's 60 total cards in the set. And so the way it, it figures the future cards is it takes the number 60 minus the um, um, number 61, because again, there's 60 cards in the set, but if you subtracted 60 from card 60, you'd have zero. So they went to 61, to, so they at least card number 60 would have a one of one um, in the set. So Terry Gwynn would be numbered 45, in the future set because uh, 61 minus 16 would be 45. So there you go. So that's how you get to the numbering because for a lot of people it's confusing and I, I finally kind of just sit down and figure it out. So for anyone who's, who's you know curious about how the sets are numbered, again, the, the now sets are basically easy because it's just the card number that they're in the set. And then um, the, the futures are basically that number subtracted from 61. So that means that the Cordo Stewart and the future now card, so the Cordo Stewart is number one card in the set. So in the now version, it's a 101. <clears throat> and the future Fred Taylor, which is the last card in the set, um, is a future 101. So uh, there's two 101s in the set. It's Cordo Stewart and as the, the now version, and Fred Taylor is the 101 in the future version. So keep an eye out for those cards because I guarantee you those are some pretty big Holy Grail cards that uh, these collectors and set builders are dying to have because if you think about it, in this set, there can be only one. 
there can be only one person who completes the now set or the future set because there's only uh, one of each of those cards available. So again, that makes the set, whoever puts it together, uh, pretty doggone cool if, if someone actually does it. All right, moving on to number six. So number six is a very interesting card and I want to talk about it for a minute because it's one of those cards and it's just a, an ongoing theme in cards from the 90s that you have to really watch out for. One is, it's a PMG. Um, it's a 1997 uh, Metal Universe Green PMG Brett Favre. So all that sounds awesome. It's graded BGS 8.5, sold on January 25th, but then it resold on the 27th. And I honestly think it's because the person didn't really read the description and won it and then realized later on that it doesn't have the serial number. So the way this set worked is cards one through, so there's 150 cards in the entire PMG run. The first 15 are green and the next 135 are red. So cards one through 15 are numbered, you know, and they're green. Now, this card is not numbered. So the way this worked back in the day was either there was sheets laying around that someone cut up or they had extra cards laying around because of damage or people, you know, wanting to return a card and, and get it replaced. So we do know that there was replacement cards, replacement sheets out there. And most likely is someone bought the sheet, cut up this card and then sent it to BGS who graded it. And that's why these missing serial number cards exist. So from a valuation standpoint, they are real cards, but they probably weren't pack pulled. And so therefore this card to me is sort of an aftermarket um, card and it should sell for a fraction of what the farm should really sell for. Now, $3,000 seems pretty aggressive for this card, but you could say, well, maybe Farb should be a $5,000 card. So this sold for half. I don't know, but I would not have bought this card for $3,000 just because I know, you know, how these cards get into market and 99% chance that it wasn't pack pulled. Um, so it doesn't to me make it, you know, uh, as legitimate of a card as one that was pack pulled. That's going to have much more conditions and issues and it'll have the serial number. So this is something to keep in mind. Don't fall for the line that these cards were inserted in packs, but this was an error. Um, no, no, that most likely never happened. Most likely that these were either on uncut sheets or they were replacement cards that during bankruptcy were just you know, bought by someone in a sale, uh, the sheets or the cards themselves and someone cut the sheets. So, Again, these are sort of aftermarket after the year that they were produced and issued to the marketplace. Um, and so to me, they're not the same thing as a pack pool card. But you, you know, you might say, hey, I can afford this and it's the same looking card, so I'll buy it to each their own. But I'm just saying this is not most this is very, very unlikely this is pack pulled. All right, number five, back to Peyton Manning. Now, Peyton Manning does this a lot. And the reason why, honestly, is because um, you know. You know, Tom Brady hadn't started his career yet until 2001. So Peyton Manning is pretty much the de facto best quarterback during this era. Um, a lot of his peers that were considered equals like McNabb um, definitely fizzled out. So he's sort of the alpha and omega during this time period. Now this is sold for as a buy it now for $3,500. So it's the 98 Bowman's Best Peyton Manning Auto. Um, it's sold on Jan 9. And um, a atomic refractor of this card numbered out of a hundred sold for eight thousand dollars in december now two bgs 9510 sold for um 915 dollars 821 they not they're not the same card i've looked at them not the same serial number so the two bgs 9510 sold between 820 and 915 um in uh, january as well so you can see that 1010 um grade uh, took this card from about a $900 card to a $3,500 card. So you can see how much people valued that extra half point in grade. And this is not a black label or straight 10 um, card. So, you know, if it was it'd probably even much higher, but it just shows you also that, you know, it's a very strong market. It was a buy now someone hit, but someone was looking for that straight 10, 10 
grade, so they wanted this card and they thought $3,500 wasn't that expensive. And I kind of think so too. I think this is one of those cards that could be a sleeper, but the refractor, atomic refractor definitely got hit for eight grand um, on December 14th. So this card is very popular. And it is, I think it's a cool looking card. And sometimes you see a little smudgy, but this has got a 10 auto. Number four, now this was the most interesting card to me on the whole set uh, or the whole, um, the whole list because I hadn't really paid attention to it. And again, it's from 1999 Skybox Premium. We saw the um, Ricky Williams come out there with the blue Ricky, you know, rubies you know, that was numbered out of 15. This card is numbered out of 100 and it's a Barry Sanders um, graded PSA 10, so very high grade. You can see the number on the back, 21 out of 100. It's one away from the jersey number. Um, and again, it's only one of three PSA 10s that are graded. Now, if you look at the card, it looks like a jambalaya. That's really what the design is supposed to remind you of. It reminds me of a lot of the jambalayas or the cards out of EX 2001. Um, the Griffey's, you know, Griffey has one that looks like similar to this card. Um, but this card has a very cool, I like the background, you know, the shiny, almost like, um, you know, galaxy looking colors in the background. Just a very colorful, awesome looking card, numbered out of 100. All those things add up to a card that is very cool looking, very nice. It's undervalued, I think, to some extent. Um, and it's, and again, jambalayas usually aren't numbered. So this is a very cool version of this card. And it's a card that I had never really seen before. I'd heard of it, but I didn't, I hadn't paid much attention to it. But as a Sanders collector, obviously this is a big card. Um, the whole set's very nice looking. I think this card is gonna take off because people love jambalayas. And, and this card is again, numbered out of 100, which is the sweet spot for rare uh, 90s inserts to be numbered out of. Um, and again, the Skybox Premium product itself can be had under $200 a box to this day. It's because it misses the 98 rookie set, so you don't get the Moss and Pey uh, Peyton Manning rookies. However, the inserts in this set and the, and the parallels are awesome. There's a lot of great cards in the set. So I'm going to be looking for some boxes of this to open at some point just because I like the set itself. And, um, you know, and, and the inserts are, are wild. Like this is now one of my favorite nineties inserts. And I didn't really notice it until I looked at the list. And that's why I put this list together is to find cards like this that I didn't really know existed. Now I see it. And now I've got the, I've got the FOMO and the card lust all over the place. Cause this card is awesome. And I really want to buy one or, or find one to add to my collection. All right. Number three. And so this will be a little bit of a run again, more Peyton Manning. So he's really dominating the list this, this month. It's very odd to me of seeing only one Sanders card, um, but you know, multiple, multiple Peyton Manny. So this, I believe, is going to you know three or four slots for Peyton on this list so far. Um, again, this is his rookie card. So you might say, well, it's not really an insert; it's a base card. I don't know. I feel like this is treated like a, a parallel or an insert card. Uh, there was a red version of this card, the, the ruby version. Um, but this one sold for $7,100 on Jan 10th. It's only authentic graded for the card with an eight auto. And these autos bubble and are hard to get, get, you know, nice autos. You can see the streakiness on the, um, G and the Manning, um, very common. And again, it's, you know, this card sold twice in January. This one brought 7,100. The other card, number two on the list, brought 7,489. And this doesn't have uh, an auto grade. And it's you know just graded a PSA 6 from a card condition. Grading wise, the auto looks about the same. But just keep in mind for people who don't know that PSA doesn't require you for a card that's from 1998 or beyond to authenticate the auto if it's pack pulled. If it's a manufacturer's guarantee, Pro, you know, anything from 1997 or before you have to get it authenticated, um, as part of the, um, as part of the process you're supposed to anyway, because evidently PSA doesn't trust the authentication 
past 1998 cards. So this card didn't actually have to have the autograph graded or authenticated. So he just got the card um, graded and it came back a six. So, you know, so really I, between these two cards, that amount of money, I would just buy the better auto. I think the prior card had the better auto. So, um, you know, you're not going to find perfect 98 contenders, Peyton Manning autos for sure. So, but big numbers over $7,000 for both cards. So, you know, this card is definitely one of the key cards of the nineties to have, uh, not just inserts or parallel. And, oh, uh, also don't be uh, fooled on the red Ruby auto. Uh, there's no such thing as a red Ruby pack pulled auto. All the red Ruby cards with the red foil on the meaning are um, basically it's a parallel, but none of them are autographed. So if you see an autograph version, it was done after the card was pack pulled. So they didn't come out of the pack that way. It's aftermarket auto. Those should be worth a lot less than this card. So don't get fooled with the red um, autograph that does not exist as a pack pool card. Number one was very shocking, very shocking to me. But again, it's essential credentials. It's a set that people are you know, buying and building. And this is a now Eddie George um, sold on January 18th. It's a very low number. Only 11 cards exist. This is number 10 of 11 and it's not graded. So obviously grading might help a little bit, but it brought $10,000 guys. This is a huge sale. Um, the seller itself, uh, lists a water rare nineties cards and sold some lots of these cards or some, you know, sold a bunch of these cards at one time. And again, it's about set builders and player collectors. It's just, if you want this card, you better get it. Now there's only 11 copies. Once they get buried into certain collector sets, they're never coming out. So again, very, very tough card. It's a beautiful card. The set itself is starting to really take off across all sports. So again, you know, this is one of those things where collectability is driving, not just hype. This isn't like people hyping up these cards, trying to get them. This is literally people putting sets together. They're probably working on them for, you know, 20 years trying to get these cards. So more power to them. This card's awesome. Uh, and very shocking that an Andy George card is number one on the list after we just saw, you know, four or five Peyton Manning cards or Barry Sanders. But to me, that is more indicative of how football cards in the market works. Um, the one thing I will say is that it's kind of shocking the price gap between that and baseball. You know, the baseball cards in general, this list uh, was much higher on the baseball side in terms of the total value. But the fact there was multiple cards over $7,000 in the football list is very encouraging. It shows that these 90s football cards are highly collectible, highly desired, and set and set registry and set collectors are, are you know hoarding them, getting them, and taking them out of circulation. So some of these cards you gotta strike while they're available. And again, if you're looking for some of these really rare cards, you may only get one or two chances before they're all gone. So there it is, guys. That's my January 2023 um, top 10 sales on ebay of football and inserts and parallels from the 90s let me know what you think any surprises any shocks any cards that you didn't see before that you now want to buy on your own um, like i want to get that uh 2000s man out of that uh, um, um, we'll try that again three, two, one. So there it is, guys. That is my top 10 sales of 1990s football inserts and parallels on eBay for January, 2023. Let me know in the comments, which cards you thought were overvalued, undervalued, any cards that you were surprised to see on the list, like this Eddie George card or cards that you just want to buy. Like I want to buy that 2000s men, Barry Sanders card, because that card is awesome. So let me know any comments in the um, in the comment section here, guys. I really want to you know have more conversations about these cards because I just love them. And I'll see you next time on Cards and Comics. Bye.